I've never fully understood the reason to why people use the phrase, I can't. I mean, saying I won't is perfectly reasonable, but I can't is just plain ridiculous. I figure that the most common reason to why people use that phrase, I can't, are because of the following two excuses. One, being the fear of failure, and two, being of lack of passion or determination. Although fear of failure is not entirely a surprise to me, because as a society, we view acts of radical creation that succeed to be acts of pure genius and higher level thinking. While on the other hand, we view acts of radical creativity that fail to be, well, acts of failure. And with the presence of failure, ideas begin to lack determination. And without determination, ideas become a train without a caboose. While still present, there is simply no engine to drive them forward and put them into action. About two months ago, project partner Asad Mohammed and myself launched cameras into near space. We managed to capture the curvature of the Earth, complemented by the blackness of everything beyond. And if I were to stand here on stage and tell you that launching cameras into near space is extremely simple in essence, you probably would not believe me. But that's okay. I'm here to tell you anyways that launching cameras into near space is in fact extremely simple. This photo we took at approximately 85,000 feet above the, above the surface of the Earth, using this styrofoam box and the contents within. Inside the box, we have four digital cameras, two taking pictures and two taking videos. We have a cell phone GPS that tracks the exact location of the box at all times, as well as hand warmers to keep the electronics warm in the high altitude frigid temperatures. As a propulsion system, we used a giant weather balloon filled with over 300 cubic feet of helium. That being said, the most common question we are asked is why did you do it? Why did you send cameras into space? Well, to answer that question, simply, would be because we wanted to. Although a better answer would be because we were fueled by passion that was sparked by online inspiration. And by any classification, this project is extremely radical in the sense that we went into it with no budget, no experience, and no training whatsoever. And overall, I look at this project as less of a personal achievement, but rather a testament to the collaborative effort of society as a whole. The amount of innovation, progression, and technological advancement that allowed us to complete this project is truly beyond me. The fact that just over $400 worth of equipment allowed us to capture images like these is truly astonishing. What would have took millions 20 years ago is honestly mind-blowing. I want to be clear to everyone that we did not discover anything or invent anything new. This project has been done before by a select few independent groups in the past. But in a way, that's the true beauty of it all. It shows that as a society, we are veering away from the once tra traditional models of learning into a time where we are no longer being told and sitting around to be told and taught what to do, where rather fascination, inspiration, and creativity is reinforced and highly rewarded. By sending cameras into space, we not only bring back images, stunning images like these, but we rather send the, the, the message that anything is truly possible. All you have to do is take that initiative, the initiative that is becoming more evident and more clear in our society, the society that is progressing towards a more maker, do-it-yourself community. Now, what I find interesting is how si a simple project can demonstrate not only shifts in society, but the actual regenerative process of accumulated shared knowledge. Using online resources, we are able to find or figure out how to complete this entire project. We went into this project with no experience at all, but by the end of it, we were able to track prevailing winds, learn how to hack into cameras and install scripts, and even learn how to sew, thanks to like-minded individual enthusiasts. And this process is not one-sided. After the completion of our project, we look forward to being able to go back online and post our results and findings. What worked for us and what didn't? What our common problems were and how to possibly overcome them? The fact that launching an eight-foot diameter weather balloon in high winds is not exactly the easiest thing to do. And this will simply just add to the regenerative cycle of online collaborated knowledge hopefully allowing others to go further and farther in future pursuits and future projects. As you can see, we uh, even captured photos of the moon. <laughs> now, what made, what made our project slightly unique was the addition of a Lego man. And before I go on, I just want to share with you this quick interesting fact. On January 7, 2012, the exact date that we launched our capsule, with a little bit of extra research, we determined that, aside from the six astronauts 
on the International Space Station, our Lego man was officially the seventh highest man in the entire world. <laughs> the reason we attached a Lego man was for that added sense of personality, that slight injection of fun, and a true testament to our childhood. A Lego man is extremely relatable on so many levels. This once individualistic experience is now relatable for millions across the world. And the day that we posted this video, it reached over 400,000 views, and it currently sits at just over 2.8 million. What excites us most about this fact is that the inspiration and joy that we received out of this project is now able to be shared with millions across the world. And I find that huge, huge in the sense that a global reach like this would have been impossible just a decade ago. This simple project, this simple action begins to demonstrate, again, not only shifts in society, but the actual overall accessibility of information today. Now, you may be familiar with a film director, Francis Ford Coppola. He once said that you do not have to specialize, do everything that you love, and then at some point in time, your future will come together for you. And in a sense, this project demonstrates just that. Even though it's not the next biomedical discovery or technological advancement, it shows us that we live in a world where to achieve cool results, you do not necessarily have to devote your entire lifetime to achieve those findings. I find coming from a student's perspective, at more times than not, people get so caught up in what they do, so focused on the formal training, that we begin to lose sight of the ridiculous and radical. We begin to forget that going above and beyond is never a bad thing. We begin to forget to push the envelope, and we ultimately begin to settle for less. Having the opportunity to present our project and findings in front of local school children has ultimately changed my outlook and perspective on things. There was one instance where a small boy ran up to me and whispered into my ear, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> and knowing that such, our simple project has such a profound effect, uh, effect and that the installation of inspiration and determination that we see in the students' eyes upon that reciprocal message that they gave back to us is truly inspiration in itself. And that's what it's really all about. That's what the regenerative cycle of shared information is all about. That initial spark and then the subsequent feedback, that aspect of fear being driven over by determination, backed by passion. Thank you.